The transition probability matrix, of course, is a stochastic matrix, as we have discussed last week, meaning that its rows are uh, all distributions, so the rows add up to one. And uh, furthermore, by convention, we will assume that P0 is equal to the identity matrix. Why? Because think about the meaning of this matrix. It is the transition probability matrix within time T. So when I just plug in zero to T, that means no time at all has passed. So within no time, I expect no transitions. So on the diagonals, I have transition, well, or no transition, let's say, um, from state one to state one. So I'm, I, I was in state one, I will still be in state one after time t. And this here is from state two to itself state two. So essentially that means no transition and you are still in state two, etc. up to state number n. Okay, so within zero time, I expect no transition to occur. So I would see all zeros in these uh, transition probabilities. Only on the diagonal, I should see ones because those are the probabilities to stay in whatever state you are. So by convention, we will accept that P0, that means state transition probability matrix within time zero is going to be assumed to be equal to the identity matrix, which is quite intuitive. Now, uh, when we have this definitions, this is state transition probability matrix, and we have the initial uh, value, let's say, um, based on these, except for pathological cases, we can say that this limit, or rather this derivative e exists. The limit as h goes to zero, while being positive of the ratio p of h minus i divided by h. Now, what is this? p of h, remember h here is a small value. So it's, it's a very small time, time period, okay? So that is the transition probability uh, matrix within time h, which is quite small, approaching to zero, okay? minus i, and i here do not think of this as just the identity matrix, but think of it as p0, okay, divided by h. Now remember, this is similar to limit as h goes to zero, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Now, if you remember, this is by definition, the derivative of f of x. But here, of course, at this point, we have plugged in x equals zero. So this is precisely the derivative of this function, here, which in case, in this case, a matrix um, evaluated at zero. So this is the derivative of a um, transition probability matrix within time zero, okay? Now we call this matrix the infinitesimal generator matrix of this continuous time Markov chain, infinitesimal generator. So mainly for a continuous time Markov chain, we are going to be working with uh, the infinitesimal generator rather than transition probability matrix. Um, now, one thing here we need to notice here is, well, of course, as we have observed, all rows of this transition probability matrix P uh, are distributions, so they should add up to one. That means I can write the sum of uh, all components on a row, except for the diagonal entry. When, when I add them up, of course, they should be one minus the entry at the diagonal, okay? That's only natural because I know, well, if you take any in a row here, let's say this is the element that coincides with the diagonal. So if I add all of the other components and subtract that sum from one, that should appear here because the row adds up to one, that's clear. Now, 
This equality, if you divide both sides by h, again, and take the limit as h goes down to zero, what you will have is the components of the matrix Q, right? Because by definition, the left-hand side will, will give you the, the sums of Q sub ij's, and the left-hand side will give you, by definition, um, Q sub ii. Therefore, we can write the sum of uh, Q components in, in the infinitesimal generator matrix of rho i. Um, they add up, I mean, the, the components uh, that are not on diagonals, meaning that J does not equal I, okay? When you add them up, that sum should be equal to the negative of what you see on the diagonal, okay? This is precisely what we obtain from this equality. So what does this tell us? That means every row of the matrix Q should add up to zero, okay? The sums of the rows of Q are zero. So this is a very characteristic um, property of an infinitesimal generator. When you add any row up, sum will be zero. Now, let's try to understand what this matrix represents a little bit better. Here, we are looking at PH minus P0 divided by H, taking the limit. Obviously, this gives me the derivative at zero. So the derivative is, as you all know, is the rate of change. So matrix P represents the, prob the transition probability from every state to every other state, okay? So what I'm looking at is the rate of change in each of these probabilities, okay? So the matrix Q, the infinitesimal generator matrix, has the rate of change in each of these probabilities, okay? Um, obviously, when you are in state I, let's say, um, the probability that you make a transition from state I to state J as time progresses um, is, is a positive value, okay? As time goes on, it's a positive value. On the other hand, the probability that you keep staying in state I, that's, that's a, a decreasing probability as time progresses, you eventually expect to move out of exit this state. Therefore, um, it's natural that the, the rate of change in that probability of, of staying in the same state is negative because that probability as time progresses decreases, okay? On the other hand, all the other probabilities, they increase as time progresses, it becomes more likely that you exit this state, whatever state you are in, and you transit into some other state. So that increases, therefore the rate of change in that probability is positive, okay? So characteristically, all the rows of this matrix Q add up to zero, okay? Except for the diagonal, we all have positive values, okay? Okay, and on the diagonal, we should have negative rates, okay? So we also call this matrix as the state transition rate matrix because in each component, it does not have probabilities, but it has state transition rates.